Hello guys, and welcome back to another session of Daniel's Security Academy. Today, we are going to talk about what a CVE is, what a CVSS score is, what a cert is, and everything around vulnerabilities you need to know and the acronyms we are using in our daily business around vulnerabilities. Let's get started with CVE. CVE stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures and identify, define and catalog publicly disclosed cybersecurity vulnerabilities. A vulnerability is pretty much um, a bug in a software which can be exploited um, to gain, for example, privilege access, uh, gather data, uh, those kind of um, security issues you might have. So that's what a vulnerability is. And currently the database of the common vulnerabilities and exposure um, the CVE has around 200,000 records. And it was launched in 1999 and is operated by the United States National Cybersecurity Center. And those um, 200,000 records which are inside of the database those are fed by the so-called CVE numbering authorities, which can be pretty much one of the uh, next three. First, it can be like vendors like Microsoft, Oracle, Cisco, Fortinet, and whatever vendor you might imagine um, launching and, and running products in the IT sphere. Secondly, we have the uh, Mitre Corporation, which essentially runs the CVE. Um, website and uh, database. And thirdly, we have the CERT centers. And about CERT, uh, I we're going to talk in a little bit um, what CERT is and what those teams and centers actually do. So one CVE entry contains like a description, um, a reference to, for example, external sources to the vendor's website and um, the creation date. Those three entries or the, those three fields are actually the only fields contained in the standard CVE post and inside the database. There has been some legacy fields which are currently obsolete, so uh, those are not being filled anymore. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it what uh, CVE is. And the CVE is um, pretty much an ID and the ID contains like the beginning uh, CV dash then the four digit year code let's say 2022 dash and then a subsequential um, identifier um, I, I mean like a sequential identifier and so it could be like uh, CVE dash 2022 dash 0157 for example this would be one CVE from the year 2022 and yeah that's pretty much how it looks like but cve is just one part of the story um, let's, let's move over to cvs cvs is the common vulnerability scoring system uh, which is uh, introduced by first uh, first stands for form of incident response and security teams i know a lot of acronyms going to be in this uh, video today, but um, those are unfortunately necessary to explain all of those. Um, so the scoring system is pretty much um, an established to score vulnerabilities based on their threat. And it is calculated based on a formula using like several matrix. And I will try um, put in the, the formula itself into uh, the video overlay, but um, I have never done the recalculation myself. So I always just look up the score and like, okay, that's nice. That's a 9.6, for example. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna uh, show the formula to you uh, right up here. And um, yeah, so calculation is pretty much based um, on uh, the, the the different metrics we have and I will get to the metrics in a second uh, let's start first with with the score itself 
um, because we have a scoring system from zero to 10, whereas zero is pretty much the lowest and the least uh, critical um, score you can have, and 10 is the most critical and the highest priority uh, scoring you can, uh, for example, have. The current version of uh, the CVSS score is 3.1, um, which has been released in uh, June 2019. And previously we had version one, which was released uh, in about 2003, 2004, and was um, highly criticized by the vendors uh, when it was launched. So they um, established and released the version two of the uh, standard formula, whatever, uh, in uh, 2007 um, and still reiterated and improved and optimized um, the, the scoring system to version 3, which was uh, launched and released in 2015 uh, with version 3.0 and now with 3.1, uh, which has had like minor changes uh, from um, 3 to 3.1. Um, the version 2 has like base matrix, um, which are access vector, access complexity and authentication, plus also impact metrics, uh, which follow the CIA trial. So we have confidentiality, integrity and availability. And uh, I'm also going to show you the calculation screenshot here again. Um, so you can see how those metrics I just mentioned um, play uh, together to scoring the, the actual final score and um, how they are um, multiplied with each other and uh, yeah the functions pretty much behind it and in version 3 um, the CVSS added um, a few metrics like user interaction and privileged required as a metric um, to be scored and also um, added the, the scope metric to both like the base and the impact metrics to um, better describe what the scope of the vulnerability is. Is it just a certain product or is it just an entire network? So the scope was added and what else? Uh, we had the access complexity uh, being renamed to attack complexity um, and this was pretty much due that the, the privilege part from uh, the access complexity uh, metric was carved out into a, a standalone uh, metric. So this is pretty much the reason why they renamed it because um, privilege is not part of um, the metric anymore. Okay, let's move over to um, an example. I used this example before in the uh, security news in October. Um, so I'm going to reuse the, the, the very same um, CV again, which is CVE 2022-40684, uh, uh, which is the fortunate critical vulnerability um, around uh, authentication by an, um, not an authentication, but authentication bypass by an unauthenticated user. And uh, I'm going to paste you the, the screenshot of the, of the CVE page where you can actually see um, the different uh, fields which are within the CVE database and that this database does not carry too many information, but it will um, always carry the information um, for the references, uh, which will bring you to the, the vendor's uh, website, for example. So um, also a screenshot which I'm, I'm going to show you. Uh, is um, how the, the CV actually looks like on the, on the Fortinet web page. Um, because the Fortinet website will show you um, the, the summary, the exploitation status, workarounds, um, affected products and solutions for this specific CV. And on top also will show you the CVSS score, which is not part of the CV database. So the scoring is not a fixed part uh, of, of the database. Uh, it's something you have to look up uh, on, the, on the website of, of the 
uh, Venus, for example. What this CV is actually about is um, the hacker, or not actually a hacker, um, an attacker can bypass the um, authentication uh, processes of the Fortinet devices, for example, 48 firewalls, 40 proxy, uh, with an unauthenticated user by crafting like malicious packets and just being able to actually access the entire device and take it over. So this is also the reason why this CVE has been uh, rated 9.6, which is uh, pretty much almost the highest you can get a CVE rated. And um, therefore, um, as I already mentioned in the security news of October, Fortinet actually approached uh, customers active customers um, previously uh, b before actually releasing the nodes and the CVE in the database uh, with the act to update their firewalls with the newest patch. As I mentioned before, let's also talk about a CERT. Uh, CERT stands for Computer Emergency Response Team and can also be alternatively being um, abbreviated as CSIRT, which stands for Cyber Security Incident Response Team. Both abbreviations pretty much mean the same. And um, yeah, I, I'm personally more often used the CERT um, term because I'm pretty much grow up with this term being used in, in my first company. So um, yeah, I always use the word, uh, the term CERT and also it, does speak out better in, in the abbreviation than CSIRT. So um, CERT was first uh, introduced or used, established uh, in 1988 by a university in um, Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh. And they pretty much reacted to the first upcoming um, computer worms, um, which were uh, programmed and, and, and spread across the internet um, or the networks back then and uh, was the first act pretty much to, to gather uh, information about those kind of um, malicious uh, activity also, or also vulnerabilities around uh, those. And first, which is also the author of the CVSS score, um, is pretty much a global association uh, of the certs around the globe. So there's like the hat association being first, and then you have the, the national uh, search teams, for example, um, below this association. And a lot of countries and regions have their own certs, like for example, the European Union, uh, but also like countries like Slovenia, Nigeria, New Zealand, China, and so many more um, countries across the entire globe um, which do feed um, those kind of vulnerabilities being added to the CV database and being scored by the CVSS to um, companies and, and private persons. So we pretty much send out emails, automatic um, notifications pretty much um, about newly added CVs which are affecting one or more products of um, a company um, which they actually sign up for. Um, so if you want to get those emails, uh, just sign up for um, one of the, your nearest CERT uh, teams and um, maybe um, some CERT um, associations teams will not be um, eligible for private persons where you'll only be able to sign up as a, as a, um, as a company. For example, the German CERT uh, team only um, provides direct information to companies, but they also offer um, a public service to to uh, citizens uh, of, of Germany. So um, there you will also get some kind of service and this also applies to many more cert uh, teams around the globe, whereas you also as a private person can receive some of those um, information uh, as soon as those uh, being released. For example, if you uh, run um, a private network at home, and you run maybe some ubiquity devices and you want to be certified or not just certified, but notified actually, um, as soon as um, a vulnerability is being published about ubiquity firewalls, access points, switches, whatever. Um, yeah, you can get your uh, notification from uh, either the vendor itself, but maybe also from one of the search teams. So yeah, 
go ahead and check it out for your nearest uh, location. So if you're in the US, uh, feel free to use the uh, US um, resources for this. If you're from Europe, uh, check if your local country um, has its own CERT team. If not, just uh, use the European CERT team. Uh, which also brings me to my summary already. Um, so how does those CV, CSS and um, CERT does tie into each other? Pretty much it's, it's like this. We have a vulnerability which gets added to the CV database. The CVE receives a score based on the formula of the CSS score, which is currently being used, which is 3.1 for right now um, of this video, 2022. And the CVE gets reported to companies which are registered uh, with one or more certs uh, and receive the warning pretty much immediately as soon as it's been uh, published. So this is the, uh, the process. Created, score, sent out to um, companies and sign up people of the mailing list. And therefore, companies can be informed about potential weaknesses and requirements to act in a fast and optimized fashion. So uh, I brought up this example, let's stick with it. If you have a 40 gate running uh, in your environment and a new vulnerability is being found and being scored, um, you know, based on, 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 the, on the mail you receive from your CERT team, okay, I have to act now, I have to act within the next days, I have to act within the next patch period, um, my, new, my next maintenance window, for example. So uh, this is a great tool um, to stay updated and always um, keep an eye on the open vulnerabilities for my product. So which is important that you sign up only for the products you are using with your search so that you don't get spammed uh, by those um, automated um, notifications. So the only way it can give you value is if it's tailored to you and to what you actually have. So yeah, um, let me know if you actually have worked with a search before, if you were aware of the CVE CSS score and that the CVSS score is actually not part of the CVE database. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what you um, already know about this. And uh, if you want to get more detail about um, some of those parts, maybe also make um, example calculation for a CVSS score. Um, yeah, just let me know and um, I'm gonna try uh, and make it into one of the upcoming videos. Thank you so much. Um, stay safe and see you in the next videos. Bye-bye. Thank you.